From ancient prophecy to science fiction, humans have long been fascinated by the future. In recent years, however, a new academic field known as long-termism has risen to prominence and captured the imagination of a new generation of thinkers. The central insight of long-termism is that, while life in the early 21st century may seem like the apex of human civilization, we may in fact be living at the very beginning of history. There is a real possibility that our descendants and their creations will go on to inhabit a truly astronomical future. The philosopher Toby Ord has argued that there is a roughly even chance that humanity will survive our present turbulent era of existential vulnerability and go on to author feats of creativity and ingenuity in the universe that we can scarcely comprehend. The future of Earth originating life could be unimaginably vast. For example, Earth will likely be habitable for another billion years, and the solar system for another four to five billion years. Long distance space travel will present enormous challenges, and yet there is a reasonable likelihood that in some form, our descendants will eventually reach neighboring star systems and there establish new bastions of civilization. From here, our entire galaxy would come within reach. Using ships traveling at just a fraction of the speed of light, our descendants could colonize the Milky Way galaxy in around 100 million years. This might seem like a very long time to us, but in cosmological time, 100 million years is no more than the blink of an eye. Indeed, in the universe, time is a resource that exists in great abundance. We live at the very beginning of what is known as the Stelliferous Era, a great epoch in the life of the universe in which stars shine and the universe is composed of galaxies that cluster into vast galactic filaments. If stars provide the energy of advanced civilizations, then our descendants could endure for the entire duration of the Stelliferous Era, approximately 100 trillion years. Though it is far from certain, it is conceivable that in the eons to come, our descendants will eventually inhabit billions of galaxies, and that we, living now, will be the progenitors of countless trillions of minds. Considering such grand futures fundamentally recontextualizes our present moments in history. It places new and profound emphasis on our responsibility to survive our current perilous era with our vast potential intact. Indeed, the existence of trillions of potential beings may depend on the actions of a comparatively tiny number of human beings over a few short generations. But there is another side to this story. In addition to our potential for unimaginable feats of prosperity and flourishing, there also exist darker possibilities. These darker possibilities are often overlooked because, among other reasons, humans have various persistent biases against thinking deeply about worst case outcomes. Nevertheless, it is a disconcerting fact that within the vastness of our potential reach and scope, there are possible futures that may be considered worse than our extinction, much worse. Considering these worst case scenarios can be challenging and even disturbing, and yet in order to truly face our great responsibility to the future, we must also guard against the possibility of extremely bad futures, failed worlds. The term dystopia is used to describe highly undesirable future scenarios. Today, we will focus on a specific category of dystopian scenario known as S-Risks, an abbreviation of Suffering Risks. The general definition of an S-Risk is a scenario that causes astronomically significant amounts of severe suffering. 
In most ethical and value systems, it is generally considered uncontroversial that severe suffering is bad and should be avoided. But another core value in this area is impartiality, that suffering matters equally irrespective of who experiences it, including non-human animals. Furthermore, suffering matters equally regardless of when it is experienced. There is, after all, no morally relevant distinction between different points in time. To discriminate against future individuals is no different from discrimination based on skin color, place of birth, or other purely contingent factors. Sentient beings living in the future are no less, and no more, deserving of moral consideration than beings alive now. Therefore, the fact that a moral catastrophe will occur in the distant future does not reduce the importance of preventing it, if we have the ability to do so. A key focus in the study of S-Risks is the possibility that future technological developments, in particular advanced artificial intelligence and large-scale space colonization, will vastly increase the scope of our civilization and could multiply the number of sentient beings in existence by many orders of magnitude. While such an astronomical scope contains the potential for extremely positive futures, there is also the potential for truly failed worlds, when the great scope of the future becomes the stage of moral catastrophes of truly astronomical proportions. Today we will consider various potential S-risks, not for the purpose of eliciting fear or deterring technological progress, but to raise awareness of S-risks, so that we can take steps now to prevent them from happening. We will explore some of these steps in the final part of the video. S-risks are scenarios that involve severe suffering on a scale that vastly exceeds all suffering that has existed on Earth so far. But how could such a moral catastrophe come to pass? Why would we or our descendants allow this to happen? As we will now explore, there is a danger that future actors may simply not care about or fail to notice the suffering their actions cause. This brings us to our first category, incidental S-risks. Incidental S-risks arise when the most efficient path to achieving a goal creates large amounts of severe suffering as an unintended side effect. A modern day example might be the suffering inflicted on animals through factory farming. Humanity raises and kills vast numbers of animals each year on factory farms and in slaughterhouses, often inflicting terrible suffering on them in the process. In the US alone, 10 billion animals are slaughtered every year, and 99% of them are raised in the horrifying conditions of factory farms. As Bauman writes, quote, It just so happens that the most economically efficient way to satisfy the growing demand for cheap animal products entails miserable conditions for billions of sentient beings. It is worth noting that this is not due to intentional malice. After all, most people do not approve of animal suffering. Rather, factory farming is the result of economic incentives and technological feasibility coupled with a lack of moral concern." End quote. We can imagine an incidental S-risk as a future development akin to factory farming but on an even more horrendous scale. Indeed, one possibility of an S-risk is that factory farming is never abolished and grows alongside the burgeoning scope of an Earth-originating civilization. As the philosopher Magnus Finding writes, quote, an extension of factory farming into space is a concrete example of how an S-risk might materialize that neither history nor contemporary events allow us to dismiss out of hand. End quote. Researchers in this field, however, consider that even more serious S risks could accompany the creation of artificial sentience. I have explored the concept of artificial minds in other videos. If and how they might be possible is a subject of significant disagreement among scientists and philosophers. One point of contention is whether a purely computational system could ever be truly conscious. The central issue 
is that we lack a clear understanding of how brains become conscious, and the specific role of computation in that process. While we may have doubts about the possibility of digital sentient minds, we do not know enough to rule them out. Furthermore, artificial minds need not be digital. Our brains, after all, are conscious. How this occurs can presumably be discovered, along with the means of replicating these conditions. At this stage, we should remain open to the possibility that fully sentient artificial minds could be created in the future. So let us consider this possibility. Researchers have speculated that if they are possible, artificial minds could be created in enormous numbers in the future. One reason for this is that artificial minds may have various significant advantages over biological ones. Digital minds, for example, could potentially be duplicated with the same ease that we now make copies of software or computer programs. If so, it could be much easier and cheaper to create artificial minds than biological ones. The creation of these minds would conceivably permit unprecedented scientific breakthroughs. Advanced AI systems, for example, might run many simulations in order to broaden their knowledge of human psychology or an attempt to predict what other agents will do in certain situations. Another incentive to create artificial minds is that, unlike biological minds, they are not vulnerable to aging or death. If the technology is available, biological individuals might seek to upload their minds as a way to avoid these limitations. Digital minds may also have significant advantages for space colonization. Enormous numbers of such minds could exist anywhere that computers can exist, including the freezing vacuum of space. It is conceivable that an advanced civilization will build computational megastructures around stars that are capable of simulating vast numbers of artificial minds. In the literature, these megastructures are known as matryoshka brains. There is of course the possibility that many, if not most of these minds, will have overwhelmingly positive and worthwhile experiences. Unfortunately, however, there are reasons to think that just like non-human beings now, artificial minds of various potential forms will not be treated with due moral consideration, and their potential suffering will pose a serious ass risk. As Bauman writes, quote, many forms of artificial beings will likely be very alien to us, and therefore pose a unique challenge to our moral sentiments. Such disembodied minds may have no face, body movements, or screams to which we can relate. That makes it difficult to empathize with them on a visceral level. In addition, we do not yet have a reliable way to detect sentience, especially in systems that are fundamentally different from human brains. We might therefore fail to recognize sentience and suffering in such voiceless beings. The combination of potentially vast numbers of sentient artificial minds and the foreseeable lack of empathy poses a serious S risk. In fact, these conditions look strikingly similar to those of factory farming, which is also characterized by economic expediency in combination with moral indifference towards non-human beings. End quote. The potential suffering of artificial minds is just one example of an incidental S risk, and various other possibilities have been explored by researchers. We will now however move on to our second category of S risks, in which enormous magnitudes of severe suffering are created deliberately. These scenarios are referred to as agential S risks. But why would anyone deliberately seek to cause astronomical amounts of suffering? Unfortunately, the seeds of these worst case scenarios lie deep within human psychology. These traits are sometimes referred to as the dark tetrad. They include narcissism, psychopathy, sadism, and Machiavellianism. Unfortunately, the negative effects of these traits are clearly visible in our world today. All too often, the power structures of our civilization 
reward the expression of these dark traits, allowing malevolent actors to rise into positions of power. Ancient human traits of tribalism, retributivism and sadism are associated with some of the worst atrocities in the history of our species. If the influence of these traits persists into the future, then the development of advanced technology, coupled with a much greater scope of our civilization, will raise the stakes dramatically and present a significant danger of agential S risks. Perhaps the greatest risks are associated with war and violent conflict. One highly perilous conflict dynamic occurs when agents, as part of an escalating conflict or war, threaten to deliberately bring about worst case outcomes in order to force the other side to yield. This strategy is all too apparent in our world today, when leaders threaten the use of nuclear weapons to help them achieve their goals. One possibility is that agential S risks will have non-human origins. A key example is artificial intelligence. Advanced AI is increasingly thought to pose a serious existential risk to human civilization. Powerful, smarter-than-human AIs might break free of all human control. If their values are not aligned with our own, the results could be catastrophic. Much of the potential suffering caused by rogue AI may be incidental, as it runs roughshod over our interests in pursuit of its own goals. And yet it is also conceivable that AIs could deliberately cause suffering. Among various strategies, AIs might adopt alien equivalents of dark tetrad traits and use our vulnerability to suffering as a way to manipulate us. Just like malevolent human actors, AIs might force our cooperation with threats of worst case outcomes. Advanced artificial intelligence is therefore a potential cause of both incidental and agential S risks. We will return to AI related risks later, as well as what we might do to prevent them, but we'll now move on to the final category of S risks those which arise from natural origins. These are referred to as natural S risks. Natural S risks refer to the possibility that natural suffering takes place or will take place in the future on an astronomical scale. Natural S risks are a controversial category because they call for us to recognize that nature by itself produces enormous amounts of severe suffering. Many of us would prefer to believe that nature is beautiful and idyllic. However, it is naive to overlook the tremendous suffering caused by Darwinian evolution. There is a possibility that despite appearances, life is evolving in many places throughout the universe. If this life is sentient and suffers comparably to that of life on Earth, this can be viewed as a natural S risk. Some futurists argue that advanced civilizations may one day intervene in the workings of evolution, perhaps even seeking to eliminate suffering altogether. The philosopher David Pierce argues that the decision of our descendants to voyage through space could be motivated not by pure exploration, but in response to natural S risks, grand rescue missions to deliver life elsewhere from suffering. With the best intentions, our descendants may attempt to seed other worlds with Darwinian life. They might believe, like some environmentalists, that Darwinian life has great value just as it is, and that we have a moral imperative to spread it throughout the universe. In addition to any value, the potential suffering that would result from such a venture amounts to a serious S risk. Though strictly speaking, this would be an incidental S risk rather than a natural one, because it occurs as a side effect in the pursuit of other goals. These are just some of the S risks that researchers have considered. However, we must also be aware of the potential for unknown S risks that have not yet been thought of or that we cannot at this stage even conceive of. Just as scholars in the Middle Ages could hardly have anticipated the atomic bomb, future developments might raise the possibility of S risks 
that we cannot yet imagine. Preventing S risks The scenarios we have considered may seem far-fetched or something out of science fiction, and yet the basic criteria for S risks seem all too plausible. Most S risks depend only on the possibility that humanity is, at present, close to the beginning of its potential reach and scope, and that the future will contain many sentient beings. This all seems possible, if not likely. So what can we do to prevent S risks? Fortunately, there are several reasons to believe that we live at a unique time, in which we could have a significant impact on the future potential of S risks. As Bauman writes, quote, the observation that we are still on a single planet that could potentially originate a vast cosmic civilization suggests that we might indeed be in a unique position. If a long or big future happens, then almost all individuals will live in the future, which means that we can influence them, but they cannot influence us. So what can we actually do to avert S risks? Many of us will feel a tension between responding to S risks and the urgent need to reduce severe suffering in our present time. Can we really prioritize speculative suffering in the distant future when there is very real and preventable suffering in the here and now? Simply put, we must do both. Fortunately, there are things we can do now that can help reduce suffering in the present as well as reducing the possibility of suffering on an astronomical scale in the future. Earlier, we explored how the creation of sentient artificial minds could present a significant danger of S risks. One step we can take to prevent this form of S risk, as well as responding to present day suffering, is to advocate for moral circle expansion. In particular, we can work to end speciesism, the discrimination of sentient beings who belong to a different species. The sheer suffering caused by factory farming is viewed by many ethical theorists as among the most pressing moral emergencies of our time. One of the best paths to both end this practice and protect future non-human beings is to advocate for the end of speciesism. In particular, we should work to expand our collective moral circle to include all beings capable of suffering, now and in the future. One other reason why thinkers consider that our time may have a uniquely greater influence on the future is the near-term potential of pivotal technologies. The emergence of these pivotal technologies could plausibly shape events from that point onwards. Researchers argue that the conditions in which these technologies are conceived could be the crucial difference between extremely positive and extremely negative future outcomes. Central among these technologies is artificial intelligence. Broad spectrum artificial general intelligence has been likened to an advanced alien civilization en route to our planet, for which we have only limited time to prepare. It may be just a matter of years before we share our world with alien intelligences vastly greater than our own. The arrival of this technology could dramatically improve life in numerous ways. It could even serve to help prevent the occurrence of S risks. And yet, while AI could propel us into a prosperous utopian future, it could plausibly cause catastrophic disruption to our civilization and quite possibly our extinction. AI is a risk factor in many, if not most, S risk scenarios. It could, for example, rapidly accelerate the creation of artificial sentience, or fall into the hands of malevolent actors. We can and should take action to prevent AI-related S risks. Research on AI safety is a small but growing field, and yet there has been even less research into how AI might cause S risks. Perhaps, rather than ensuring that advanced AI will share our present values, we should focus on making sure that it has better values than us, for example by giving due moral consideration to all sentient beings. More specifically, 
we need to do more research on how AIs could develop malevolent traits. For example, just like dark tetrad traits evolved in human evolution, AI training environments with multiple competing agents could incentivize alien equivalents of these dark tetrad traits in the motivations of AI systems. One upside of the comparative lack of research into AI-related S-risks is that we should expect to find considerable low-hanging fruit for researchers wanting to make a difference in this field. Another pivotal technology is the potential of large-scale space colonization, which would have the effect of astronomically increasing the scope of our civilization. Many potential S-risks would follow such a development. A promising area for reducing such S-risks is the establishment of space governance. We currently lack a global framework for space governance. As of now, space is mostly a free-for-all which poses a risk of race dynamics and severe conflicts. It would be extremely valuable to replace the current state of ambiguity with coherent regulations that favour positive, long-term outcomes if and when large-scale space colonisation becomes possible. Earlier, we discussed how S-risks could result from the rise of malevolent actors into positions of power. There are, however, political reforms that can help guard against this risk factor. One in particular is the promotion of democracy. Compared to other systems of government, modern liberal democracies offer a much better protection of human rights and civil liberties like free speech. These fundamental rights are a precondition of being able to raise moral concerns which is one reason why their frequent suppression in autocratic systems presents a considerable danger of future S-risks. While democracies are not always successful in preventing malevolent rule, they appear better than any other system in this regard. It is also the case that war between democratic countries is uniquely rare. Therefore, promoting and defending democracy is likely to be an effective strategy for reducing S-risks. Another proposal is the idea of extending political representation to all sentient beings, including non-human animals. Non-human animals cannot represent their own interests, but we could, for example, hire commissioners whose sole task is to defend the interests of non-human animals. This has been termed sentientist democracy, or sentiocracy. Another intervention would be to provide political representation to future individuals, another class of sentient beings that go entirely unrepresented in current institutions. Ultimately, one of the most important activities for reducing S risks is further research. We can either get involved in this research ourselves, or we can donate to organisations which are already doing it. Two such organisations are the Centre for Reducing Suffering and the Organisation for Prevention of Intense Suffering. Our potential is vast beyond imagination, and the significance of our time in shaping the long-term future may be far greater than we realise. Now more than ever, we must seek to close the gap between our wisdom and our accelerating power. The vision of long-termism, with its astronomical scope, inspires us to reflect on our potential, and what our descendants might eventually author on the cosmic stage. And yet it also highlights our great moral responsibility to the future, and the countless sentient beings that could come after us. All of us hope for a positive future, but in order to take our responsibility to the future seriously, we must also reflect on how things could go tragically wrong, and what we can do now to prevent worst case scenarios. The stakes are too high to ignore. Hello everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Waking Cosmos. This video was inspired by the fascinating book Avoiding the Worst by Tobias Bauman. It contains a much more thorough summary of S-risks, as well as what we can do to prevent them. 
This book is available entirely free in the description of this video, including an audiobook version which I narrated. So if you want to listen to that, the link is in the description. Thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe for more episodes, and I look forward to chatting with you all in the comments. Alright, that is about it from me. Until next time.